now that you have experience with CD and LS, let's expand our repertoire with the commands copy, move, and remove. These are file manipulation commands, analogous to right-clicking on a file and copying and pasting it, renaming it or moving it to a folder, or moving it to the trash bin. The copy and move commands are more complex than the commands in the previous tutorial, since they require two inputs, or arguments. We will also use these commands to introduce the concept of options, or flags, which give your commands greater flexibility. Let's begin with the copy and move commands. You can use these with any file on your computer. For this tutorial, however, I recommend that you create a sample text file like this one. Type a few lines in a text editor, make sure it's in plain text mode, and then save it to your desktop as My File. Using the GUI, rename the file like you usually would, and then make a copy. Next, move your files into the directory My Folder. Then go into the directory and remove the files by clicking and dragging them to the trash. Now let's do this from the command line. Open up a terminal and navigate to your desktop directory. You can create files with the touch command, followed by the name of the file. For example, touch myfile.txt. After each command, type ls to see the updated current directory. Note that ls can take a directory as an argument. This can save you time. Instead of navigating to the directory and typing ls without any arguments, which simply returns the contents of the current working directory, you can type ls and then the name of a directory to return its contents. Now type open and then myfile.txt. This will open the file with your default text editor. Type something and save the file. Then type move myfile.txt myneufile.txt to rename the file. The move command requires two arguments. The first argument is the source file, or the file input into the command. The second argument is the target file, or the output of the command. The copy command also requires two arguments. To make a copy, type cp, the name of the source file, and then a name for the target file. To move your files into a directory, type mv, the name of each file you want to move, and then the name of the directory. If the last argument is a directory, all of the other inputs will be moved to that directory. To remove the files, cd into the directory, and then type rm, followed by the names of the files that you want to remove. You can specify as many files as you want. Note that in Unix, files that are removed do not go to the trash bin. You can't recover them, so be careful when using this command. Now try this. Go back to the desktop directory, create another text file as before, and then use the cp command to copy the file to my folder, instead of moving it. Here's a hint. The directory will be your target file. Check the contents of both your current directory and your target directory. What if you want to copy or move a directory? Moving directories is similar to moving files. We have a source directory and a target directory, and we can either rename the directory or move it around. For example, if we create a new directory in the desktop directory called store my folder, we can use the move command to move my new folder to store my folder and use ls to list the contents of the store my folder directory. You can then move that folder back out to the desktop by using this command. Notice, however, that if you want to copy a directory, using the copy command like we did before won't work. You get an error. To use other features of a command, we need to use options, also known as flags. Think of a command as a Swiss army knife, and options as different tools within it. In this case, we want to copy a directory instead of a file. We will need to use the dash r option, which means to recursively copy the directory and all of its contents, including subdirectories if they exist. First, use the touch command to create a file called myfile 
and then move it into my new folder. Type cp r my new folder, my other folder, and check the contents of each. They should be identical. To remove a directory, we have two options. If the directory is empty, you can remove it with rmdir, short for remove directory. If the directory is not empty, you will need to use the dash r flag, which recursively removes everything in the directory, including subdirectories. Usually, it's more practical to use rm with the dash r option, instead of manually removing everything in the directory. If you want to look up more options for a command, use the man command followed by the command name. You can scroll up and down the instruction manual by using the arrow keys. When you're done, press Q to exit. These new commands will enable you to become more fluent with Unix. By now, you should begin to realize that although it can take some time to learn how to use Unix, it can be quicker than using the GUI. To reinforce the concepts we learned today, try the following exercises. First, make a new directory in your home directory, call it whatever you like, and either create a couple of new files within that directory or copy files into the directory from another directory. Then, copy your new directory to the desktop. Now copy that same directory to the desktop, but append a forward slash to the end of the directory that you are copying. For example, if the directory is called my folder, type cp r my folder forward slash and then space desktop. What happens? Type man cp and look up the dash r option. Are there any other options you think might be useful? In the next video, we will learn about how to manipulate and read text files from the command line. See you then.